Today, we hear from the family friend of a man who was shot and killed over the weekend. Robert Marquez was killed while on duty as a security guard. He was shot and killed by a man he had stopped to question, and tonight that man is still on the run. Our Phil Archer is joining us live tonight with what that friend had to say about this. Phil? Yeah, he was the owner of a private security firm, and it's been almost a week now since he was gunned down in cold blood on a north side street. At this point, Houston police have no suspects in that case, so now his friends are trying to help. Flowers and balloons mark the spot where 55-year-old Robert Marquez was gunned down Saturday night. His lifelong friend Steve Brown was there today, one of many friends Marquez left behind. We knew Robert's line of work. We know that it's a dangerous line of work. Uh, we were all shocked and just heartbroken. Brown says his friend was only a week or so away from retiring when he went out on his last patrol Saturday. Marquez apparently followed a white Ford SUV, possibly this one, to the 600 block of Rush Creek where the truck stopped. Marquez stopped too. While he was sitting in his car behind the truck, a man got out, walked back to the passenger side window of Marquez's car and shot him. Somebody knows who did it. Somebody knows something about it. Uh, they are not the good guys. They need to be caught. Robert Marquez leaves behind a wife and two children and a legion of friends like Brown who'd known him since middle school. Brown says he and others plan to raise $5,000 to add to the reward already being offered by Houston Crime Stoppers. They hope that will help police find the killers. This time it was the Marquez family. Next time it could be my family, it could be yours, it could be anybody's. That extra money would bring the total reward amount up to $10,000. Marquez's friends and Houston police asking anyone with information about that murder to call Houston Crime Stoppers. Reporting live downtown, I'm Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Phil, thank you. A man charged with killing a 17-year-old girl and her father will stay in jail while awaiting trial. A judge ordered a higher bond today for 27-year-old Eddie Lopez Hernandez. He is charged with two counts of murder, intoxication assault, and hit and run. Prosecutors say he was high on drugs when he drove his car into the one driven by 65-year-old Mario Baez, who was on his way to a movie with his family. Baez's 17-year-old daughter was killed in a crash. Her father died of the injuries about two weeks after, and a younger daughter was also injured. Lopez Hernandez is accused of fleeing from the scene with his two-year-old son, who was in the car with him. Judge Jan Crocker raised Lopez Hernandez's bond to over $400,000. Prosecutors say he is in the country illegally from Guatemala and had been deported following two previous arrests. He was arrested in Harris County in uh, 2010. He served a jail sentence for possession of marijuana. He was subsequently deported in January of 2011. Uh, he was rearrested at in McAllen in April of 2011. Uh, and also then charged with illegal entry into the United States for a second time. I can definitely say that, that, that our client at this point in time is, is, should be afforded the presumption of innocence. Um, all defendants are presumed innocent when charges are barred. Um, and it's early in this case. If Lopez Hernandez is found guilty on either of the murder charges, he could face up to 99 years in prison. Protecting Houston from a flood, coming up possible changes to the attics and Barker reservoirs that could help prevent another Harvey-type flood. Plus, James Comey's Clinton probe, a stinging report by the U.S. Justice Department regarding the former FBI director's handling of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. That's next on Channel 2 News at 5. Thank you for continuing to make KPRC Channel 2 number one. You relied on our coverage to keep you informed and safe and went with us to faraway places. At KPRC Channel 2, our dedication to excellence and serving our community is never ending. In years past, now, and in years to come, KPRC Channel 2 continues to be Houston's number one choice and your home for news. What is a mattress? How does it make you feel? Where did it come from? How was it made? The best possible product. At the best price. Located in East Downtown and now in Katie off I-10 and Fort Bend Road. Save huge with 25% off showroom items.
prices and weekly sale prices too. Like large avocados, now two for just three dollars. A little confidence goes a long way. The 2018 Nissan Titan comes standard with a 5.6 liter V8 and America's best truck warranty. That covers five years, 100,000 miles, inside and out, bumper to bumper. Save up to $12,757 on the 2018 Texas Titan XD or save up to $4,500 on Armada. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. Don't miss the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend at the Humble Civic Center. Browse the largest display of hot tubs in the region at huge savings this weekend at the Humble Civic Center. You're watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. After months of waiting, many on Capitol Hill have something to say about the release of the Inspector General's new report detailing a series of failures by former FBI Director James Comey. Yes, the Justice Department's internal watchdog finds Comey's behavior, quote, extraordinary and insubordinate, adding that he deviated from well-established department policies in his handling of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Now, the president's supporters and his critics are each seizing on different portions of that report. The president's sycophants and cronies are going to distort and spin this report, seeking to discredit the special counsel. It reaffirmed the president's suspicions about Comey's conduct and the political bias among some of the members of the FBI. Now, for his part, James Comey called the report reasonable, but said he disagrees with some parts of it. Another focus of that report, text messages between two top FBI employees showing a, quote, willingness to take official action to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president, but not finding that they had actually done so. It's expected to be an emotional evening in Washington as members of Congress come together for their annual baseball game for charity. This comes one year after the shooting rampage at a practice that wounded among others, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. He was shot in the hip during that practice. Now, after multiple surgeries, he's back at work and back on the field. Scalise said he's trying to earn back his position at second base, so we'll see if he's convinced the coaches that he's ready for that. After Harvey, engineers have been scrambling to figure out a way to help prevent another catastrophic flood like we experienced after that storm. Now, there's one idea out there that may help the Barker and Attics Reservoir hold more water. Our Andy Sirota spoke with the Army Corps of Engineers and is joining us from the newsroom with details on this. Andy? Hey, Lauren, the backstory here, we were at the Attics and Barker Reservoirs the other day with Congressman John Culberson interviewing him for our upcoming hurricane special when he mentioned a plan that he believes would fortify Houston against future extreme weather events like Hurricane Harvey. He told us instead of spending money on building a third reservoir, he is pushing the Army Corps of Engineers to double the capacity of the Attics and Barker reservoirs by excavating another 10 feet out of them. Culberson believes that would solve about 80% of the problems with the flooding that we saw downstream of Buffalo Bayou during Harvey. It would allow for extra ponding rather than having to release water downstream. Culberson thinks it could be done very quickly and for less than $2 billion. The Army Corps of Engineers tells us a study for this particular project is under consideration for funding. The reservoirs are so big that a study of this magnitude would take three years to complete. We're talking about more than 25,000 acres here. It would be a massive excavation effort. And first, obviously, it would be required to clear and grub uh, the vegetation within the reservoirs. And then we would have to start excavating material in a way that would be specifically designed to maintain the hydrology and hydraulics within the reservoir to ensure that we could have the proper flow. But you're talking about uh, millions of cubic yards of material that would take years to be able to remove it to increase the capacity of the reservoirs. And just a side note here, I know a lot of folks are worried about the rain that's expected to fall this weekend. The Army Corps of Engineers believes the rain that's forecasted for this weekend doesn't pose a significant risk, risk there. It is something the reservoirs would be able to contain. Right now, they're dry. 
Live in the newsroom, Andy Sirota, KPRC Channel 2 News. Yeah, that's good to know, Andy. Thank Absolutely. you, sir. Absolutely. Frank here to tell us yep. more about our weather today and coming up this week. Well, and you'll notice on, I think, any forecast you look at, nobody's putting 100% down. You know, a lot of times I will. I'll say 100%. It's going to rain. I mean, there's still the chance if this really starts to get a spin to it and stays more down in Mexico and takes a lot of the moisture with it, we could end up dry-ish. Uh -huh. but, but we've still got 80%. <laughs> at least so we have some rain today, though. We need it. Summer. We're in drought. I know. Yeah. Happy Flag Day, by the way. Same to you. I uh, know, I love this. Happy Flag Day from Crystal Beach, and don't forget the Astros. There yeah, you go. That's an improper display of the flag, but Is it? nonetheless. Well, you can argue with them, Bill. I'll give you their address. <laughs> I've got 94 for a high today, 91 at Hobby, 90 in Galveston. Temperature right now, 85. Easterly winds at 7, and you can see these temperatures held down by the clouds and the rain that we saw. 77 at Hobby right now. That's a help. 94 at Brenham, 92 at Bryan. You can see southeast and easterly winds, 5, 6, 7 miles an hour. So fairly quiet one out there right now. Now, after a busy afternoon, it looks like we could see a repeat, although the model I'm going to show you doesn't really pump it up like we saw today. Down to the south, getting a little shower here between Bay City and Damon. That's beginning to wind down as well. A little bit of lightning still trying to make a, an appearance, but all in all, that's about it. So here's the future cast, and you can see even that's not showing up. So as we go into the overnight, we're quiet. We get into tomorrow afternoon, a few showers again. There's noon into the afternoon, quiet as we head into the evening. And then even Saturday, a lot of people are like wanting to know about Saturday, obviously. Right now, this has a fairly quiet one for us. That's 1030 in the morning. And then even into the afternoon, just scattered like we have seen, not completely dry, but not a washout. It's Sunday. And that's as far as this model goes out. That's 10 a.m. And you can see that's when the rain really starts to move our Away, Sunday and then into Monday. We need it. There's the drought monitor. All those reds are extreme and exceptional drought. And we have what we're seeing is abnormally dry to some moderate drought across parts of southeast Texas. So X marks the spot. There's too much wind shear. You see those, those showers moving along pretty quickly for this to develop until late tomorrow and Saturday. That wind shear should die down, but then it's going to be getting close to the shoreline. So 10% chance is about it. And the European model doesn't do much with this. You can see just showers continue to move right along. There's Saturday. Sunday, that's a little heavier. And you'll notice this area, especially to the south, on Monday and on into Tuesday, then things begin to quiet down. So the European rainfall future cast has the heaviest from the South Houston to Corpus Christi. That's the four to six. You look up here around Houston, you're two to three, and that's about it. The American future cast does want to take the heavier rains right over the Houston area with four to six inches there. And this just came out, this model. So there's your four to six and uh, two to three for most of the rest of the area. So bullseyeing right on the Houston area. We just got to continue to watch it. But there again, there's that 80% for Monday, 60% for Sunday. So as we ramp up toward the Father's Day weekend and the beginning of next week, that's our best chance for 